Hey everyone, so there is a baking project I've been wanting to work on. I'm trying to slowly branch out and show you guys that I make more than just macarons, um, though macarons are obviously near and dear to my heart. Um, for people who want to also explore other kinds of pastries, I want to do that as well. So I am going to head into town um, to the farmer's market and hopefully find some things because I want to make a kind of like a white chocolate vanilla mousse and then just load it up with fresh fruit on top. So that is my goal to find some cool fresh fruits to, as the topping for this dessert and then walk you through how to set up this pretty easy but also could be very elegant and delicious dessert. So let's go do that. It's not quite the right time of year for a ton of fruit options, but I was able to get some strawberries and lemons um, for the top of this Bavarois, and so I decided to infuse my um, mousse with the lemon as well as vanilla. Um, so yeah, let's get into making the base of this. A Bavarois, if you have never made or heard of that before, is a kind of a mousse where you make an anglaise and then add gelatin, and then before it cools completely and sets up, you mix in some whipped cream. This one will also involve some white chocolate, so it'll be extra delicious. To start off this whole process, I just have my cream here and my vanilla bean and some lemon zest um, and I'm just infusing those flavors while preparing all the rest of my ingredients, getting my gelatin bloomed and ready and all of that. After the cream has had some time to infuse, I'm just going to add the egg yolks into my sugar and give that a really, really good whisk, combine that, aerate it a little bit, and bring the cream a little bit back, warmer to almost a scald. After I get my sugar and yolks, um whisked a little bit there and my cream is warm i'm going to temper those together because if you just dump the egg yolk mixture into the cream um you could end up with some gross curdling going on and we want to avoid that at all costs so I will temper that in and then continuously stir. Um, you can use a whisk or a spatula for this until it reaches the right temperature um, or when you, you'll know it's ready because it's not boiling, um, but you could add, uh, put a spoon into the mixture and draw your finger down the back of it and it would hold its position. So we're looking to thicken this, but not boil it, not let it curdle, or anything like that. So if you're new to making anglaise, this might feel a little bit complicated, but it is the base of so, 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 so many recipes in the pastry world, especially French pastry. So if it is something you are curious about learning more about, if you want to know more about French pastry, learning how to make a really good anglaise is a really vital step. So this would be a great recipe for you to try out.
once the anglaise is at the right texture and temperature, I'm adding in that bloomed gelatin off the heat and stirring that around. If I had a larger quantity here, I would definitely use an immersion blender and um, then you can pour that right over the top of your white chocolate while it is still warm. We want that chocolate to melt, so do not wait long before doing this step. Again, give that a really good mix to make sure everything is completely emulsified, and then you want to let that cool down to just above room temperature before adding in your uh, whipped cream. If you add in the whipped cream while the chocolate anglaise mixture is too hot, you will just completely ruin all of the beautiful structure that the whipped cream is supposed to be adding. Um, and if you wait until it's too cold, the chocolate combined with the gelatin will set up the mixture a little bit too much so it won't fully incorporate into the whipped cream and you will again end up with a weird texture. When you are adding whipped cream into pastries, what you want is a pretty, you know, medium to stiff peak but you still want it to be pourable you don't want it to be so stiff that it is like <laughs> a brick right you want to be able to pour or scoop in the whipped cream and you should do this a little bit at a time again kind of tempering um, the liquid so you have still a little bit warmer of that anglaise chocolate mixture and then the cooler um, very cold whipped cream so first you can start off with a whisk or a spatula and just slowly incorporate a little bit at a time and then once once it seems like the um, two mixtures are about the same temperature, you can go ahead and dump the rest of your whipped cream in. As soon as you get everything incorporated, you will want to pour it into your uh, mold or serving dishes. So you'll want to make sure to have those at the ready as well. Um, so for me, I'm just using a couple glasses here, but this would also be a really great mousse to use for a tart or some kind of petit gâteau or entremet. because I was not making these for any special occasion and also I only had a very few glasses to choose from in my Airbnb. I didn't really pay attention to how high up I was pouring them, but you might want to measure or weigh that out if you are doing this for something special or for an occasion or for sale. After those have been cooling, chilling in the refrigerator for at least several hours, I did mine overnight, you can start working on the topping. For me, I'm using the strawberries and the fraise de bois or the wild strawberries I got at the market. And then I'm also going to be using some wild strawberry fraise de bois jam um, that I found in another local store. So I'm going to be dicing some of the larger strawberries to mix in with the jam to create this sort of um, fresher, a little bit brighter, more textured um, compote sort of situation because at this point the topping is a little bit semi-homemade here. Um, I didn't want to make enough to make my own jam or anything otherwise you absolutely could make your own strawberry jam and then toss in some extra strawberry pieces right at the end there. Anyway, so I've got that jam and diced strawberry mixture and I also have some larger pieces of strawberry and then also some slivers of lemon. You could use candied lemon, you could zest a lemon if you have a zester as I don't here, or honestly whatever fruits or toppings you think would fit well with this vanilla white chocolate mousse. 
I just put the diced strawberries and jam mixture in the center and then built up with fresh strawberries and fraise de bois around the outside, building that up both for taste and appearance. And then I'll finish it off with the lemon zest. You could use so many different containers or molds or anything. Uh, this mousse is really delicious. It is soft but is relatively stable and durable um, and it would be really elegant in individual bowls or in a larger more family style tart or serving dish or whatever so i really really liked this recipe how fresh it was perfect for spring really really delectable and beautiful and simple <laughs> so many so many adjectives it's really really a lovely dessert Let me get my spoon in here so you can see just how luscious this mousse is. I hate it when things have too much gelatin or are way too stiff, but you can just see how easily the spoon pulls through that. It is so light and effervescent with that white chocolate and vanilla bean and the lemon in there. Oh, just absolutely delectable. I really hope you enjoy this recipe and this different style of dessert on my channel. If you give it a try, definitely let me know in the comments or tag me on Instagram. And until next time, I hope you have a wonderful day. Bye!